Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. Well, we've been talking a lot this month about the Holy Ghost. And so far, this series that we brought to you was a perspective on the Holy Ghost and the attributes that the Holy Ghost brings to our lives. We want to finish this series out, Ghosts, with this message this afternoon. We hope you enjoyed your Christmas break. We hope you enjoyed your time of sharing and celebration of the birth of our Messiah. If you can, join me in the first chapter of the book of St. Luke. And I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation version, and I want you to join me this afternoon around the 31st verse. And it reads something like this. Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a son. And Mary, you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and he'll be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David, and he will reign forever over Israel. His kingdom will never end. But Mary asked the angel, how can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Our key text will be from the 35th verse. The angel replied, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. The Lord gave us this thought for this afternoon. Uh, this afternoon, I want to deal with this subject matter from the womb to the tomb. It's interesting because I'm amazed and I marvel at the female anatomy. <laughs> and this is not me being vulgar, but it's intriguing the work that God put in in the creative process or the creative structure of the female reproductive system particularly. And I'm speaking of that of the womb. And I want to talk today and I want to take some time to encourage all of us from the perspective of the womb. Speaking specifically about the uterus this afternoon. When you research the uterus, it stands out because the uterus was God's way of blessing humanity with the natural ability to be able to facilitate life. The purpose of a uterus is literally for humanity to give birth to the future. The purpose of a uterus is literally for us to give birth to the future. And even though the uterus is a birthplace, don't miss this. What happens in the uterus is interesting because even though it's a place of birth, the uterus is also a place of death. But what do you mean, Cephas? That's, that's interesting that you would say that. Well, not so. Every woman understands that the way the body works, that's the purpose of a menstruation cycle. Bro, that's the reason why your woman has a period, because the period is symbolic of the uterus lining that's decaying and that's no longer needed. The period is designed in order to release from the uterus the eggs that are no longer being used in part of the, re the reproductive or the creation process. And so it's for that matter that in the same place, that God has ordained life to be is also the same place that death happens at least monthly. And that's why I got to praise God and be thankful for his brilliance and how he put the system together, his brilliance and how he put the body together. What do you mean, Cephas? I'm preaching already that you can experience life in the same place that you have death. 
that you can experience dying, but at the same time live forevermore. God is here with us today. He's in the scripture this afternoon. And, and you got to celebrate the birth of Jesus. You got to celebrate that the angel shows up before Jesus' birth and visits his mom. And that's why he tells her, Mary, that you are favored amongst all women. Mary, why are you favored? The reason why you're favored is because your uterus, Mary, is going to be the place in which God uses your uterus to introduce the Holy Ghost to humanity. Mary, you're favored among women because the Lord is going to use the Holy Ghost as the airline in which Jesus travels from eternity into time. You're favored amongst women because the same place that experiences death once a month is also going to be used to help humanity live forever. But Mary has one question of this angel. That's, those are some lofty goals. Those are some big attainables. Said, I like your idea of using my body as the airline for Jesus to enter into humanity. But my question is, how are you going to do that seeing as I've never had sex with a man before in my life? And that's when the angel says, we're going to do it like this. We're going to do it in these three ways. And that's what we have to deal with our scripture text today in Luke, the 31st chapter specifically, and the 35th verse. Why? Because the, the angel of the Lord tells Mary that essentially there are three things that are going to happen to your womb. When the Holy Ghost is introduced to your womb, what's going to happen is God's going to come out victorious. When the Holy Ghost is introduced to your womb, three things are going to happen on behalf of humanity. The first thing that's going to happen in verse number 31, the angel says, Mary, you're going to conceive. I like this word conceive because the word conceive or conception here in the 31st verse means to arrest or to lock down. In order for Jesus to come into this life, in order for Jesus to come into this world what has to happen is he has to arrest or lock down your body what do you mean Cephas that he has to arrest or lock down the body anytime the Holy Ghost visits humanity then what happens is a seizure of the body or the host that houses the Holy Ghost Anytime the Holy Ghost comes into my body or your body, the Holy Ghost, what it then does is it acts like a border patrol agent with somebody that's trying to sneak contraband across the border is it seizes and it freezes all assets. When the Holy Ghost comes into my life, it takes control over everything. When the Holy Ghost comes into my life, it now occupates my body. And if the Holy Ghost is occupying my body, that means I've got to submit or forfeit my whole life. I have to plan to die if I want to be born again. The Holy Ghost. I, I love the mind of the angel of the Lord. I love the mind of God. God sits in eternity and he asks himself, how am I going to get into this world? And the same way he created the world using the Holy Spirit is the same way he's going to enter into our world in order to save people with the Holy Ghost. Don't you understand the Holy Ghost is God's way for using a portal from eternity into time. The Holy Ghost is God's hallway from dimensions for all my science buffs. That's what the Holy Ghost is. It's God using a hallway from one dimension into another. The Holy Ghost is the border crossing from heaven into earth. So he tells Mary three things that the Holy Ghost is going to do. When the Holy Ghost arrives into your womb, it's going to do for three things. The first the thing that it's going to do is you must conceive or take conception. 
the Holy Ghost is going to arrest your body. The second thing that the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost does is the scripture says that the Holy Ghost in verse number 35 will come upon you. That word come upon you means to attack. So the Holy Ghost first arrests a soul when it takes over a body. The second thing that the Holy Ghost does is the Holy Ghost comes to attack me. That makes me feel some type of way, y'all, that the Holy Ghost is coming into my life to attack me. Because that's the problem that I have right now is I get too emotional and I wear my, my feelings on my sleeve and I feel like I'm always under attack. I feel like I'm being attacked for what I like. I feel like I'm being attacked for how I feel. I feel like I'm being attacked for what I said. I feel like I'm always under attack because of the way I think and because of what I've done. I'm here to tell you you're not making this, these things up in your head. I'm here to tell you you're not playing the victim like you suppose. But that's exactly what's going on. When the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit enters into a person's body, that's exactly what's happening. It is attacking a person's body. My body is under attack the first day the Holy Ghost shows up. How is that, Cephas? How is my body under attack? How is my body the focus of attack from the Holy Ghost? Because my body is at war with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is at war with my humanity. My Holy Ghost has to fight in order to make me more like God. My humanity doesn't enjoy the fact that the Holy Ghost has now taken over my body. Body. My flesh doesn't enjoy the fact that the Holy Ghost has, show, has shown up to seize and arrest assets in my life. But my body is here and it's fighting a back, gap, a back against the Holy Ghost because it does not want to conform to the image of God. And because of that, I feel like the Holy Ghost is attacking me. But the only way that I can get over being attacked by the Holy Ghost is that I have to allow the Holy Ghost to win the battle. What do you mean, Cephas? I need to be comfortable dying in order for me to live. The third thing that the Holy Ghost does when it comes into our life, when the Holy Ghost entered the womb, when the Holy Ghost enters a human body, when the Holy Ghost is introduced to humanity, number one, humanity must be arrested. I'm stopped at where the Holy Ghost arrives. Wherever the Holy Ghost starts is where my life stops. The second thing that it does is the Holy Ghost comes to attack. But the third thing that the Holy Ghost does in verse number 35 is the scripture lets us know that the Holy Ghost comes to overshadow you. I like the word overshadow you there because the word overshadow you there means to make brilliant. See, I've been plagued the majority of my life by making dumb decisions, dumb decisions. I've been plagued the majority of my life by talking stupid and living stupidly. I've been plagued the majority of my life by not doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. But I'm glad that when the Holy Ghost comes, what it does is it comes to bring brilliance or bring some type of intelligence to my life. Some would say artificial intelligence, but I'm here to say that it's official intelligence. What do you mean, Cephas? You got to think about how brilliant the plan of salvation is when you think about God's mentality. God understands that Satan was able to get over on a naive woman in order to push his agenda and allow him to screw up the fortunes for humanity and for humanity's destiny's sake. God says, I see how you do it. You, you took advantage of a young woman. You took advantage of a naive woman. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap you in your face because I'm going to allow a naive, prepubescent teenage girl to house the birthplace of the Messiah. 
And that's what I'm going to do in order to get back at the devil. I want you to understand what the Lord does. The Lord uses a scandal in order to reverse a scandal. Isn't that just like God? Don't you understand when you and I receive the Holy Ghost is as if he's using something so powerful and scandalous in order to reverse or remit the scandal that I have in my life. And that's why I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because there's a lot of scandals that I don't need brought up. There's a lot of questionable behaviors of stuff that I've done that I don't need brought before the people again. But I'm thankful that when my scandal hits, the Holy Ghost covers and it reverses the curse. The Holy Ghost is here for me in my life to put the old rumors to death of what I used to be. And when I experienced the new birth, my culpability to my old ways dies. And so now I'm sitting here and I'm questioning this part of the Holy Ghost, though. I understand the Holy Ghost comes to give me a new life. I understand the Holy Ghost comes to reverse my scandal. I understand how the Holy Ghost comes in order to make me more brilliant. I understand that the Holy Ghost has come in order to fight off my hum humanity. I understand why the Holy Ghost has appeared in my life in order for conception to take place, in order to seize over assets that I really didn't need in order to thrive in the first place. But what I don't understand is how is my life still messy even though I have the Holy Ghost? Well, let me tell you something. The mess that you and I encounter, even after having the Holy Ghost, all that is, that mess can be likened to afterbirth. When you look at afterbirth in the delivery room, after a baby is conceived, what the afterbirth is a sign of, the afterbirth is a sign of, even though there's a mess here, don't miss the beautiful part that it's, the mess is due to the fact that something had to give life. Something had to be born here. Something had to happen in order for somebody to receive life, in order for somebody to be introduced into this newness of this world. And so sometimes the mess that I got going on in my life is just proof that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. So when I receive the Holy Ghost, it's a womb to tomb experience. My new life or my death is a reminder of my new life. And my old death is a reminder that I can live with more life or that which is more abundant. There's life involved and there's also death. But the Lord wants us to live by dying today. We celebrate the womb of Mary this afternoon. We celebrate the womb of Mary that produced life through the power of the Holy Ghost. But we also celebrate the fact that wherever life is produced, it means my old life had to die. And I thank God for my womb to the tomb experience. I'm speaking to somebody today because you want to live longer. You want to live with a better life. You want more life. You want abundance. You want God to help you improve the quality of life you have right now. Well, I have the secret to it. The secret to an improvement in your life now is to receive the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is going to improve your life by taking your old life. When the Holy Ghost allows my old life to die off, it becomes easy at that point to replace it with a new life. And such is why we call this the new birth experience.
I want you to contact me at myepicencounter at gmail.com so that we can connect with you and show you how to get the womb from tomb experience. You're going to live by dying instead of being so focused on dying to live. I want to help you out. And I'm going to end in this prayer. Lord, help us today, Lord, to see that there's everlasting life waiting for us in the next season, Lord Jesus. But we have to first be willing to submit or allow you to confiscate or surrender our old life, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we understand that you have to destroy in order to build. That, Lord, you have to kill in order to save. And so, Lord, we submit our life to you, Lord Jesus. The old life isn't worth anything. It has no value to it, Lord Jesus. So we submit to the Holy Ghost right now and allow the Holy Ghost to rebuild and replace and to restore inside of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For those that want to be a blessing today, you're talking about more life. Well, let me tell you this. When you experience more life or a better life, you have no problem with giving. You have no problem with being a blessing. And so I'm encouraging you right now, be a blessing this afternoon. There are five ways that you can give. You can give via Givelify, you can give via PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, or our very own Epic Encounters app, which is available on the Google Play Store, on the Apple Store. God bless you and we'll see you in 2022. Hello, we want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.